You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golson. It is Friday, June 14th. Lots of disasters going on all over the country or have recently happened this season. And uh, LCMS congregations, districts stepping up uh, to serve in those communities and to provide support and care and uh, just mucking out houses, Mm -hmm. chainsaws to trees, all those um, things in order to to help families and congregations, communities get back to daily life. In studio today, the pastor of disaster, the Reverend Dr. (laughs) Reverend Dr. Ross Johnson. See, I said pastor of disaster very easily, but Reverend Dr. Ross Johnson, director of LCMS Disaster Response. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Andy, thank you. He's not really the pastor of disaster. He's the pastor who responds to disasters. Sometimes the master of disaster. (laughs) Oh, dear. (laughs) That's a whole different story um yes, so we have experienced just this this season this spring uh floods and uh still flooding i mean we're mm-hmm. still what uh, uh has it crested finally here in st louis is it i think coming? it did it's but i haven't heard over. anything about another and crest yet. nebraska experienced flooding mm-hmm. uh, you you know more of this uh than i do ross where all the disasters have happened and you and uh, your team staying on top of this and, and it's not just flooding that we're seeing we're having uh storms winds uh tornadoes all across the midwest so over the last two months we've as the lutheran church missouri sent a disaster response team alert teams Lutheran response early teams have uh, been responding to storms in northern Illinois district, central Illinois district, across Missouri, into Kansas, even into Oklahoma. So that's a pretty wide section of the United States. Our chainsaw teams have been especially active in this time of disaster. That means we have trained volunteers that are Lutherans that will gather together and work through a Lutheran congregation and work into their community. So we saw that in central Illinois just a month ago in Watsika area, and that's in the central Illinois area. Over 100 people got together, worked for a couple of days, cleaning out all the fallen trees. We see that after a tornado or a big wind event, sometimes companies will come in and charge up to two to $4,000 per tree. Wow. And a lot of times insurance doesn't cover that or there's a long delay, like almost a year of a homeowner being reimbursed. So when a, a volunteer team come, of Lutherans can come in, clean up someone's yard, we can literally save $10,000 on a work day. And a lot of times the people that are victims of these wind disasters, they don't have any extra money or cash. And we never charge when we respond to a disaster. So it's kind of a, an, a special, unique way that we can be responding to disasters. Mm-hmm. And there's been there's been a, a bunch of new trainings lately, too. And some of them have come out of some of these disasters. Right. There's been training events. We have a one-day training event. Usually it's about eight hours on a Saturday. And it's about what to do, what not to do, and why we do it as Lutherans after a disaster. A lot of times people want to volunteer, but they're not quite sure what do you do to be helpful and what should you not do? And so this training event will give a great insight. And there's something for everyone to do. You don't have to only be a strong, muscular, young guy right out of college to be able to help out. There's something for everybody to do, whether it's uh, helping out with spiritual care, whether it is uh, helping out making sure that people are hydrated on the team, making sure that all the tools are managed properly. There's literally something to do for everything, everybody. And one of the things that we always focus on after a disaster is spiritual care. We just don't want to help out a homeowner. We want to also bring them the peace that only Christ can give them. Because when your house has been flooded out and all of your earthly possessions are gone, a lot of times you also have a spiritual crisis. So we want to bring God's peace. And to explain that even though it feels like we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, We don't have to fear because our Lord is near us and he's getting us through that dark time, through that valley, and that there's peace and hope that Christ can bring even in the midst of tragedy. When we get to a homeowner's house that's been flooded out, a lot of times they're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of a marathon and a lot of times they're just kind of in that sprinting phase of, wow, what do I do? I need to work really hard. But we know that there will be a lull, that the person will be overwhelmed, that there will be a sense of grief a sense of loss. And that's where the Christian family and the church can come in. And a Christian response is something that makes what we do as Lutherans unique. There's a lot of very helpful organizations out there helping after a disaster, but it's really the Christians, the Lutherans that bring spiritual care along with helping hands. 
Spiritual care and chainsaws. That's mm-hmm. what Lutherans do. So yeah. <laughs> one hey. of the many things we do. <laughs> Lutherans with chainsaws. I mean, um, it sounds like a band. <laughs> well, and being properly <laughs> equipped to to provide care, mm-hmm. whether it's being you know properly equipped uh, with the scriptures to provide that that spiritual care, that Christian care, or uh, chainsaws. Or uh, I saw a uh, a new trailer yesterday. Is that right? Did yeah. One of the mm-hmm. things that we're doing is trying to equip all of the districts to be able to of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod to be able to be self contained that when a disaster happens, that they'll be able to bring teams from across the district to help out. But sometimes, like what we saw a couple months ago in Nebraska, sometimes you need help from the outside. And we set up a disaster response camp out of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Fremont, Nebraska. So if somebody wants to come from anywhere in the United States or parts of the Midwest to help out, we have a place for them to stay. We have jobs lined up for them to do. There's rebuilding and reconstruction after the massive flooding that Fremont, Nebraska had just a couple of months ago. Most of the houses have been mucked out. But now that we need to go in and after they're dried out, go in and rebuild, that means putting drywall in, doing ministry to the families that have gone through so much loss. So if we have people that are interested in volunteering, maybe going with their family, some friends, maybe a church group, they want to volunteer for a week, have a service project in the summer. Fremont, Nebraska is a a great place, and Good Shepherd Lutheran Church is the place to do that. Absolutely. And we can post... uh information i believe there's information absolutely you can go to our website Mm -hmm. lcms.org slash disaster Mm -hmm. we have all kinds of different training opportunities updates with what we're doing also on our facebook site lcms disaster response on facebook if you just search that lcms disaster response you'll be able to get updates prayers what's going on where we're responding we try to post at least once or twice every day so, and that's a way of keeping people in the loop with the active, ongoing work that we're doing in the United States and across the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, speaking of learning about new things and keeping up to date, there have a, a conference coming up. We do. Soon. October 2nd, oh, 3rd, so and 4th. <laughs> and that is a conference that's not only for pastors, not only for experienced disaster responders, but if you're wanting just to learn more about what we're doing in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. How do we network across the United States and internationally with different districts, district disaster response coordinators, uh, uh, recognized service organizations, and the Synod? Or how can we just work better together collaboratively? It's something for lay people. It's for people active in disasters. We try to make it extremely affordable. It's only a $50 registration fee. That covers all the food, the meals for the conference. And uh, we have a discount rate for the hotel. I think it's $79 you can stay at the Hilton for. Uh, A lot of times you can't even stay at a Motel 6 (laughs) for that kind of price. You get a great (laughs) breakfast. So we try to feed everybody really well. But have just a really interesting time of working together. And i got to add... The people that you will meet at the Disaster Response Conference are some of the neatest people in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. People that just want to serve and be helpful. Uh, we do all the work that we do free of charge to disaster response victims. People are very generous with their time uh, and just very caring people. And if I remember, I read if I read correctly, yeah, if I remember correctly from reading this <laughs> recently. It's wow. Friday, right? Yes, um, it is. I think that it is. Uh, there's also a bonus training at the conference after the conference yeah so if people want to stay friday night and saturday morning after the conference we're also doing a chainsaw training so mm-hmm. if we have people that have already gone through the alert program like we want to do more we want to learn more and chainsaw is kind of the next kind of stage we're always very concerned about safety and having proper mm-hmm. training so we're having one of our most experienced tr- chainsaw trainers over 30 years of professional experience, Ed Brashear, coming from the Southern District of the Missouri Center. He's going to be speaking at our conference, but also staying and doing an extra training event. So people that come to our conference, they can also register for that training event and get certified and know what to do and how to operate a chainsaw safely. A lot of people have operated chainsaws in the past, but it doesn't mean that they've done it safely with safe equipment (laughs) and the proper safety equipment. That's important. I, uh, I was a pastor in Alabama for 
almost eight years and everybody knew how to run a chainsaw, but I'm not quite <laughs> sure anybody knew how to run a chainsaw safely. And it was difficult to try to teach them otherwise. I think the we, next... are, we are open-minded to <laughs> learning and being safer here with LCMS Disaster Response. I think the next step would be like chainsaw art after this, you know, yes. so taking that, the, that, that alert, is part of what you learn. You learn how to, draw, to put a cross <laughs> in the chain and the, and the stub of the tree. Yes. Uh, we make plaques out of slices of the tree. I have seen those. Yeah, it's kind of neat. The Reverend Dr. Ross Johnson, Director of LCMS Disaster Response. Thank you so much for the update. Thank you. You listen to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs> Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.